So let us do a quick review. You focused, structured on their needs, stories that are like scenes from movies, burned into your prospect and customer's mind. And then let's look at the next level that will take your presentation and conversation to a whole new level. I am on a personal crusade and failing miserably in some parts of my life. And that is to make sure my clients sound clear, concise, and credible. And the only way you can do that is to answer the question, are you guilty of the unconscious goof that is ruining your credibility? And this is with sloppy language. Now, my naughty word that even the highest level CEOs have to slap their hands. A lot of my coaching sessions are in Zoom, which is a video meeting. So, because many of my clients are all over the world. And so I can see them and they can say me. If they use the word S-T-U-F-F, -F, the naughty word, I make them slap their hand. Don't care how important you are. In person, I'll reach over and do it. Stuff is debris and rubbish and does not believe, belong in your sales conversations. I remember hearing a charismatic executive at one of my clients' meetings. They had just spent $40 million in this new wonderful technology. And he was on stage without notes. He was well-dressed. He was one of the most powerful, persuasive presenters I've ever seen in an executive. And then he said, Remember, they spent $40 million on their new technology. And he said, our customers need our stuff. <laughs> no, they need our technology, our unique methodology. Be specific. Stuff is a word you should only use at Christmas and Thanksgiving. <laughs> when you are in the kitchen, talking about preparing dinner. Avoid empty language. And that is not the only word. For example, the question I ask my clients more than any other is, if it weren't a thing, what would it be? I sat at the back of one of my speech coaching camps and speakers kept getting up. There are three things that will make you successful. There are four things that will help you make a sale. There are five things. You listen to the news. I'm, I'm a great consumer. Oh, I love listening to experts on the Sunday morning talk shows. And you hear the thing is. No, I think they mean my point of view is. or the main idea here, or the biggest challenge here, if it weren't a thing, what would it be? Because again, a thing is not specific. You might understand what we're talking about, but if you take this information in isolation, it doesn't make sense. For one of my biggest clients, I coach a hundred brilliant engineers twice a year to deliver technical presentations at their customer conferences. Now, what is added to the complexity is at last year's meeting, we had customers from 71 countries. In Silicon Valley, this is an international audience only driving 50 miles from my house. Unless you are specific, if English is your second or third language, you do not understand what is meant in the isolation of the sentence. So one of these brilliant engineers said, there are two things people love about. So I asked, if they weren't things, what would they be? Innovative upgrades. 
I said, there are billions of people in the world. What people love your innovative upgrades? He said, systems administrators. Now, can you understand if English is your second or third language, or even if it's your first, the difference in the quality of the communications between two things people love and two innovative upgrades that systems administrators love. Now, the only way you can do this in your more stressful, formal, conversations or presentations, even if you, if you develop relationships informally. How you speak needs to sound conversation. It's just like a speech that Don and I might give. We want it to sound conversational, but it's not a conversation, just as your presentation or sales conversation is not just a conversation, as you'd have with your friends, because you think in advance, what is the best way to ask the questions I need to ask? What is the best way to convey our benefits? What is the best way to highlight their priorities as we can serve them? You think in advance, so it is prepared, well thought through conversation. Because I don't care how seasoned you are, when you have a big opportunity, you are nervous. I've been paid to speak for 40 years. Last night, didn't sleep nearly as well as the night before, because this is an opportunity, you paid your money, you inconvenienced yourself, you invested your time. Even as a seasoned presenter, this is nerve wracking. So what we do is take to the more stressful situations that we have in sales, we take what is habit and what is normal and what is comfortable even if it's not effective. This is why I challenge you to revisit what you say and to take presentations and sales conversations to the level of preciseness that you need. We need to build these habits in everyday life. You will not improve what you're not aware of, which I'm gonna challenge you informally, but in your sales meetings, Make a habit of delivering presentations and recording them. Make sure you say to your spouse and your co-workers, I'm working on being more specific. If I say stuff or things, ask me specifically what do you mean? I guarantee the quality of your communications will be at least 50% better, just making that one change. Now, tons. I'm sorry if you can't weigh it, it's not tons. You don't have a ton of ideas, you don't have a ton of notes. You have pages of notes. You have dozens of actionable ideas. If you go to a trade show and invest thousands of dollars for a booth, if one of your sales team comes back and says, boss, we got a ton of leads, how can you manage that? They didn't have a ton of leads. If they had a ton of business cards, they would still be there trying to get the forklift to pick them up. <laughs> what you can manage is, we invested $15,000 in the trade booth. We took four of our professionals, and during the 12 hours that were open for the attendees, we had conversations with close to 500 people. 120 were our existing customers, and 12 of them have already booked demos of our new technology, and the internal sales team is following up on the other 25 we marked that this is a good, a good time to follow up with them. 
Now, we had a high percentage that would not be prospects for us, but we identified 87 who were great prospects. 12 of them already have the, our next conversation book, the internal sales team have committed by the end of this week. They will have booked appointments or gone to the next level with the rest. That you can manage. Specificity builds credibility. <laughs> 